Hi, everybody. This is Dave Opterbeck, and welcome to the first segment of our theology and science learning community. I'm really excited to be doing this learning community with all of you who have chosen to participate. As I mentioned in the materials that I sent out about this learning community, it is based on a course that I teach at uh, the university where I teach. I'm presently teaching it to undergraduates. I have previously taught this class at a seminary level. As you might know, my primary location of work is as a law professor. I teach constitutional law and I teach law and technology courses. And I'm also trained as a theologian. I have a Master of Arts in Theology from Fuller Theological Seminary in California. And I have a PhD in systematic and philosophical theology from the University of Nottingham in the UK, where I studied under Connor Cunningham, and the focus of Connor's work at the time and the focus of my study at the time was the intersection of Christian theology and the natural sciences. So this is a subject that really interests me. It spills over into the work I do relating to law and ethics at the law school, and it also spills into teaching that I do in the religion department at the university, and I'm really excited to be putting this material together in a way that I hope is going to be useful and accessible to you all as people who are simply interested in the subject, uh, and perhaps for some of you as people who are involved in different kinds of local church leadership settings. I think this is, especially for uh, Christian churches in the, the global north and the global west, uh, and I also think in the Global South as well, a really important subject. We live in a, in a scientific and technological age, and we need to be able to engage fruitfully with the best thinking of our, of our times in science and in technology. And that, I believe, and I hope you'll see as we go through this course, is something that the great thinkers in the history of the Christian faith have always tried to do. Now, let me give a little bit of word about something this course is not. And one thing that this course is not is a simplistic effort at what some people might call apologetics. That is, we're not going to try and prove why uh, Christian faith is true as against the natural sciences. We're not going to try to prove why uh, the Bible is true against the natural sciences. In fact, I hope you'll begin to see today, and you'll see throughout the course, that framing a question that way is, is really a, a problem. It assumes that there must be some kind of conflict between Christian faith and the natural sciences. And ultimately, what we're going to say is that they're really, uh, that's not the model that we want to adopt. We want to adopt a different kind of model that is based on the belief that uh, God speaks truth to us wherever we find truth. That said, there are places where our thinking about Christian faith and the way we may try to live out our faith in our, in our diverse different kinds of Christian communities might run into tension with some expressions of the natural sciences and some ways in which that is practiced in our broader culture. And we want to... Uh, look at those tensions fruitfully and see, uh, you know, are there ways in which, um, and we, we believe that there are certainly likely will be ways in which our perspective as, uh, if we are coming to this course, you know, as a uh, person who's practicing Christian faith, are, that our perspective and our practice on it is uh, hopefully going to, to shed some light that is, that is useful and that is hopeful to the world. And, uh, and in some places, we might see claims that are made in the name of the natural sciences that we might suggest go beyond really the bounds of what science itself can or should claim, that really become metaphysical or philosophical or even theological claims, um, where we, we might uh, push back a little bit. 
Now, having suggested that there might be places where we see some uh, convergences and there might be places where we see some fruitful tensions and we certainly aren't looking for a conflict model, uh, let me say something else that this course is not, and that is it is not a course in creationism. And what do I mean by creationism? Now, as we will discuss and we'll begin to discuss over the course of the next week, Christian theology proclaims a doctrine of creation, and we proclaim a distinction between God and the creation, and we proclaim, in fact, that God is the creator of all that is. And we will suggest that there are some uh, good reasons to think that there is a God and that God is the creator of all that all that is, and there are some good arguments in support of that. I would suggest not in the form of uh, proofs, but in the form of some good arguments that we can make. And we are um, exploring a belief in, in creation as creation. But I want to distinguish that from what I'm calling creationism, and I would suggest that creationism is a a very modern phenomenon, and we will get into some of this history uh, later in the uh, the course of our learning learning community together. But a relatively modern phenomenon that tries to read, really tries to read the Bible as a kind of scientific, literally scientific text. And in some versions of modern creationism, um, this would mean that we would have to say the the Earth and the universe are are perhaps only. 10 or 12,000 years old, and um, it, we would have to try to use the story of Noah's flood in the Bible to explain lots of different geological features, and we would have to um, really deny and even fight against most of the outlines or most of the details of scientific theory of biological evolution. And we're not going to take that approach. I, I I don't think that's the most fruitful approach. I don't think that's the most kind of historically Christian approach. And uh, you will see, as I hope, as we go through the course, uh, why I uh, take that uh, kind of perspective. Um, I take the perspective that what the natural sciences tell us about the age of the Earth and the universe uh, being, you know, the universe being 14 or so billion years old and the Earth being four or so billion years old is uh, basically correct, and that what the natural sciences tell us about the essential essential facts of biological evolution, that there is uh, natural descent, that uh, over the course of the four billion years of life on Earth, life has uh, developed and changed in response to the environment, and that's a natural process that we can understand and study, that those basic outlines are also essentially correct and, and very well established by the scientific evidence. And we will you know, get a little more in, in detail into that as we go into the class, and we will suggest that that raises some interesting questions. All of that raises some interesting questions for Christian theology and for uh, how we understand and uh, read the Bible as uh, Christian scripture, but that none of these are uh, insurmountable difficulties, and in fact, there are, are very fruitful ways to understand all of this that are, are consistent with uh, the deep and rich tradition of Christian thought. 